this is the actual topic so before that we will try to know that what are the myths in regarding to this topic so people used to think that it is not true that you lose a tooth for every pregnancy that you lose a tooth every time there is a pregnancy there is a tooth loss and calcium is taken from the mother's teeth for the baby's growth and mother's diet should be adequate enough and otherwise the mother's bones will become weak and the whole calcium is taken away and the whole uh, all the teeth of the mothers are lost these were the two myths which were regarding the pregnancy and the teeth so when we begin with the actual topic we have the periodontal disease and adverse pregnancy outcomes now periodontal disease and adverse pregnancy outcomes we have most of the adverse pregnancy outcomes are preterm birth low birth weight babies pre eclampsia miscarriage intrauterine growth retardation and premature rupture of the membrane and the most important small for gestational age this is one of the most important now when we consider the relationship between the periodontal disease and adverse pregnancy outcome we have the most common authority which is often backer for centuries we had often backer who has done lot of work and often backer was the most important authority because in 1996 often backer has introduced the terminology called as periodontal medicine so often backer has started a terminology called as periodontal medicine in 1996 after his first study he and his associates realized that pregnancy and periodontal disease have a bidirectional relationship and periodontal disease could be considered as a risk factor for adverse pregnancy outcome there was one more study which was done before that by galloway who suggested that the disease has more than just an association but also contributes so for you have to be very clear in understanding that what is the association disease and what is the causal factor some conditions you have causal factor some conditions you have association factors now often backer has suggested that how the disease happens and how the periodontal disease is responsible for the foci of infection where it releases the endotoxins which are lipopolysaccharides which will cross the placental membranes across the blood stream and elicit the production of inflammatory mediators and leads to their disease it basically leads to pre term parturition now this is a very important classification on low birth weight the only terminology you are aware of is low birth weight so low birth weight is less than 2 and 1/2 kg if the baby is born so normally we consider the normal birth weight is considered to be 3 kg 3000 grams now if it is less than 2 and 1/2 kg it is called as a low birth weight if it is less than 1500 grams it is called as very low birth weight if it is less than 1000 grams it is called as extremely low birth weight okay that is very important so these are the three conditions which are low birth weight associated then you have preterm birth preterm birth is classified into normal gestation preterm birth late preterm birth very preterm birth and extremely preterm birth so we consider the normal gestation to be 40 weeks preterm birth is considered less than 37 weeks late preterm 34 to 36 weeks very preterm less than 32 weeks and extremely preterm less than 28 weeks so this is how we sub classify the preterm birth so when we consider preterm low birth weight when i say preterm low birth weight it is less than 36 37 weeks of gestation with less than 2 and 1/2 kg of a baby which is born and this is a very important definition of preterm low birth weight you have risk factors and lot of risk this happens more commonly in african american heritage people 
low social economic status people who cannot undergo a good prenatal care drug abuse alcohol and tobacco use hypertension diabetes and patients with multiple pregnancies so when the patient already had undergone multiple pregnancies then the chances of the parturition is complicated or with lot of adverse outcomes so it is possible that the genito urinary and the periodontal infections may adversely affect the pregnancy outcomes that is very important there are there are various risk factors for that you have environmental factors that means i have already told you antenatal care nutrition habits genetic factors and obstetric factors all of these factors will lead to the disease now what happens actually is because of these factors which are genetic or obstetric or anything these factors will lead to infection or a toxic exposure to the fetus and because of the other factors all these factors will lead to preterm rupture of the membranes and a premature labor basically it's a premature labor that means premature labor is contributing to the various membrane ruptures and the delivery or the parturition this figure is an important classic figure from journal of medical life then this is how we understand the um, physiology and the pathology of the of the preterm low birth weight now when there is an infection you have an endotoxins and you know the most important endotoxin for periodontal disease is lipopolysaccharide it releases the endotoxins and the other microbial factors which will lead to inflammation there is inflammation which leads to complement activation and macrophages and tnf also there are a lot of inflammatory mediators which are released they are also there so and because of which they will be a normal delivery also needs an oxytocin which is stimulated by the pituitary even that release to the contraction of the uterine and they will be a premature labor so what exactly happens is when all of these things are acting they will be premature delivery so you have to understand the main concept or the pathophysiology now i have explained that there are three mechanisms which are accepted by offenbacher which explains the three mechanisms are the bacterial spreading the inflammatory products dissemination and role of fetal maternal immune response to oral pathogen i'll explain one by one this is the most important the core of the topic you have bacterial spreading that means the bacteria which are present in the oral cavity we can uh, attribute it to p gingivalis or p intermedia now these bacteria spread all along the system of circulation and can penetrate into the placenta and can enter into the amniotic fluid they found fusobacterium nucleatum in the amniotic fluid they found p intermedia in the amniotic fluid so that is bacterial spreading is most important then you have the inflammatory products that means all the inflammatory products which are released from the periodontal disease or from the gums that products from the blood circulation can cross the placental membranes and when i say products i include interleukin 1 beta prostaglandins tnf these products and they may also go and indirectly stimulate the liver and liver may release acute phase proteins and that may also stimulate the premature then the most important when we consider preterm low birth weight per se we need to understand that the role of fetal maternal immune response you may ask me that why all the females are not having this problem why only few people have there are so many periodontal disease uh, related females who have got the disease but may not have preterm birth why is it like that because of the immune response some females have a different type of a genetic or a phenotypic response which are hyper responsive in the nature so as these interleukins are hyper responsive they are too sensitive to the bacteria and then the maternal immune response is very very hyper responsive immune reaction is very exaggerated which will relate to that so what happens is the prostaglandins and prostaglandins are most important to cause the labor or the uterine contractions this is how the three mechanisms explain the role of the disease in the adverse pregnancy out this is a very important classic diagram which shows the possible mechanisms and this was again contributed by offenbacher in 2013 now offenbacher has explained as you can see that there is a infection there is a chance of the bacterial products and the pro inflammatory cytokines which are released which may directly enter into the placenta as you can see or go to the liver and release acute phase proteins so when they enter into the placenta what they cause 
is a chorioamniotic infection in the membrane which are responsible for the inflammatory mediators in the placenta now all these infections and all the bacteria are released inside then there will be an inflammatory response production of the prostaglandins membranes will rupture and there will be a premature labor one more thing the infections can also lead to lot of growth factor release and lot of multiple uh, platelet thrombies which are formed which will also lead to preeclampsia i will discuss about preeclampsia in the later half of the presentation then you have miscarriages which happen and then the most important uh, i hope you remember the first slide which i showed you that there is something called as bacterial vaginosis that means few females who have got bacterial vaginosis that means the infection of the vagina those infections can retrograde enter into the uterus and can lead to the placental damage and can lead to the infection so chorio amniotic infections or bacterial vaginosis or periodontal disease are causing lot of infections which is leading to basically nutshell is the chorio amniotic infections and the amount of inflammatory mediators will increase and the disease will happen that's how it happens and the most important the landmark study is by offenbacher 1996 human study conducted case control study on 124 pregnant or postpartum women and he has shown a significant relationship this is very important and you cannot afford to forget the name of offenbacher offenbacher uh, was a person who has coined the term perio medicine but unfortunately expired from 15 days back uh, i hope everyone is aware of uh, offenbacher Uh, this is one important thing. Just for the interest of the postgraduates, I have added that there is something called as the amniotic fluid sludge. It was given by William Costerton. I think Costerton is also uh, considered as one of the pioneers of biofilm. Costerton, there is a textbook on Costerton for biofilm, and there is a detection of P. gingivalis in the placenta and Fusobacterium nucleatum in the fluids, which have buttressed the concept of oral infections and pregnancy. There are several studies I have shown uh, in the presentation. The green indicates the positive, and the red indicates the negative. So the green indicated studies: Oppenbacher, Lopez. You have got uh, the Jarjora, Marine, Malinora. A lot of people have done on positive studies, and the negative studies are also there. They are also definitely negative studies. But then you may also, but uh, most important negative study is by Vettu et al. And uh, most, and one more important is Sinewas et al. 2009. Vetu 2006 are two more, and there's one more Metalovis. There are three classic studies which were done on negative aspects of the studies. You may ask again that why there is so much of disparity among studies. So the answer is because the selection of the patient. Some are case control, some are cohort, some are RCT. We cannot confirm. One explanation for their findings is over control. You don't know how to confirm the factors, and you don't know how much history the patients are revealing. That is why there's a lot of disparity in systematic. then this is a very very important uh, the last meeting happened in 2013 you have periodontitis and adverse pregnancy outcomes it was consensus report of the joint european federation of periodontology and american academy of periodontology workshop on periodontitis and systemic disease a very good volume for post graduates to read and that has given a lot of information regarding this and it has supported it was given by sans et al it was a recent one working committees has opinion that observation studies have provide an evidence and there are direct and indirect effects which reach the fetal placenta direct means the direct bacteria will go inside the placenta and the amniotic fluid and direct means the inflammation so bro broadly you classify into two effects direct and indirect every female patient and has reported some guidance that every female patient in a child bearing age should go or intended to go for a prenatal counseling prenatal care and prenatal therapy has to be done if the patient are having existing this is one of the most important scanapico 2003 annals of periodontology it also said that periodontal disease is a risk factor but causality is not clear then periodontal disease and preeclampsia so then you may ask me you now what is preeclampsia preeclampsia is nothing but in normal words it is pregnancy hypotension or a gestational hypotension but it is not a normal hypotension it is a hypotension with proteinuria so when the hypotension is accompanied with proteinuria it is called as preeclampsia now preeclampsia is also a very distinct disorder with lot of issues and preeclampsia happens because of the same reason that there's there's a lot of inflammation in the in the placenta there's a lot of inflammation in the amniotic fluid in the sac 
and those will lead to systemic spread and a lot of things will happen which leads to vasoconstriction all over the body and hypertension happens. That's how we, what, that is what is preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is the terminology which is used for gestational hypertension. If, a, if, the, if, the, if the pregnant female is already having hypertension, you cannot say it is preeclampsia. If the hypertension happens in second or third trimester during pregnancy, it is called as preeclampsia. Now, preeclampsia, severe and progressive maternal periodontal disease during pregnancy is associated with very high risk of preeclampsia and that was given by Bogus 2003. A higher proportion of the preeclamptic women were infected subgingivally with a lot of periodontal bacteria. This is one of the systematic review uh, in, in 2010, it's given by Cunnan and he said that preeclampsia is associated but none of them have given a 100% proof. There is one more in 2013 by Slograstra et al. And they also have given a positive association but a very weaker risk of preeclampsia. Now, uh, role of uh, periodontal intervention in reducing the adverse pregnancy outcomes and then the most important person was McAlovis. McAlovis has given a negative feedback. I have told you if I'm indicating red, it means negative. McAlovis, 2006, has said that if I do SRP, if I do FLAP, if I do any treatment for a pregnant female and try to reduce the adverse pregnancy outcomes, they're not going to help you out. But then, the same year, a great personality, often backer, has given an editorial board review on this paper and has said that the answer is premature. There you cannot commit, but there are positive and negative associations. As I said to you, McAlovis 2006, Srinivas 2009 have said negative association studies of this concept. Now, uh, this is uh, a little diverted. Actually, I'm not supposed to talk about this, but uh, just for the awareness of the undergraduates and for the need-based people. Periodontal manifestations of pregnancy, there are two manifestations of pregnancy. One is pregnancy gingivitis, other one is pregnancy fever. Now, pregnancy gingivitis, if you remember, it is uh, conditioned, uh, both of them are conditioned enlargements and pregnancy gingivitis is very special because it happens only in the marginal gingiva. You can see the figure, you can see the whole margins are involved. So pregnancy gingivitis has got a lot of margin involvement and all the margins are involved with pregnancy gingivitis. It is a marginal gingival inflammation. Then you have pregnancy tumor which is purely a type of biogenic but happens in pregnancy and pregnancy tumor is attributed to pregnancy because of its hormonal imbalance. It begins at the month, maybe the end of second trimester or beginning of third trimester and larges, it is magenta or reddish color. You can see the figure. It is magenta or reddish color. You can see in the figure, the magenta and the reddish color here. You can see how, how uh, flattened the surface it is. It bleeds. It, it is nothing but biogenic, but it is uh, called as pregnancy tumor, which is histopathologically called as angiogranuloma, purely because of hormonal imbalance. You can attribute everything in pregnancy because of hormonal imbalance. There's a lot of disturbance in the hormones, a lot of issues with the hormones because of which it happens. So what you need to understand is whenever there is a hormonal imbalance, the estrogen progesterone levels will increase, right? Estrogen progesterone levels will increase and these will have receptors on gingiva. Main reason is, so these and then P intermedia. The most common bacteria which is found in pregnancy is P intermedia, Prevotella intermedia. Prevotella intermedia predominates a lot in the gingival sulcus. Why? Because it needs vitamin K. So basically, vitamin K is there, which is menadione. This is also given by the hormones. That is why P intermedia dominates and that's how the disease happens. You understand that, that how the conditions will happen. If you need any clarity, you can ask me uh, later. Then uh, the next thing is the management of the pregnant patient. This is also an additional point for the students that how do you manage? And many professionals are very apprehensive actually when the pregnant female enters your clinic. So other than a good plaque control, you, you, you just do not want to do anything. But then yeah, you can do a prudent uh, knowledge is necessary. You have to go for an elective dental care and only if possible, during the second trimester. So you cannot do it. Any emergency, okay, first and third trimester, but otherwise the ideal time is the second trimester as a safest zone or safest period. 
prolonged chair time may need to be avoided because woman is very very uncomfortable and that is what it is called as supine hypotensive syndrome when the woman is asked to lie down completely supine on the chair it compresses the vena cava and it leads to supine hypotensive syndrome so what is the precaution you take is and make the patient lie down on the left side so that is likely ever elevated to the 6 inch soft wedge that see a figure and ask the patient to lie down in a slight different way so that the vena cava is not compressed or or not having the pressure and which will not lead to any sort of uh, compression and hypotension that is very important you can go for all the varieties of uh, treatments uh, but considering that the antibiotics are avoided and you have to follow the drug category radiographs also be very careful second trimester is safest as i said to you la's are good you can give la lignocaine is safe it is metabolized by liver major oral and perio surgery should be postponed safety of the radiographs avoid radiograph but then if you are giving if you want to take a radiograph because it's an rct or a pulp involvement or something you need to go for a good protection you need to go for thyroid collar lead apron very strong and most important technically high speed films you have got films so you can use maybe e film the high speed films are used and then you can take the radiograph if necessary but second trimester but not first and third i hope it is very clear that the drugs of uh, fda pregnancy are there fda pregnancy are there for the risk factors and then it is it is not going to affect okay then uh, what is the most important consideration is uh, prenatal oral health counseling is necessary you have to make sure that the prenatal counseling is also done why prenatal or antenatal counseling is done to make the patient aware what is the condition to make the patient motivate to brush twice to maintain to come for checkup and to make it mandatory there are a lot of aap reports which say that prenatal oral counseling is very very important and fda has given a list so the uh, i hope if you know that there are three categories of drugs drugs category a b and c drugs category a is safest b is also safe c is to be avoided so your lignocaine your penicillins your paracetamol all of them come under safe category of drugs so you can give them a good painkiller is paracetamol a good antibiotic is amoxicillin you have to be careful you're not going to give any teratogenic drugs it is not only for pregnancy but also for breastfeeding you need to understand even that thing regarding the uh, the distribution and the prescription of the drugs you can definitely give there are people who ask whether can we give chlorhexidine yeah you can give whether can we give hexagel for massage you can give anything topical you can give they are not teratogenic you can comfortably give them but try to avoid but what happens basically is after the parturition most of the enlargement subsides but if it doesn't subside then you may have to go for excision but then you have to go for excision taking care of many things maybe post uh, parturition that is something very important which you all have to understand okay so that is one thing then so these are the main these are the main precautions and then the most important thing one is uh, put pedontitis effect the time to conception this is something very interesting even i was trying to uh, wondering around the reason behind it but then uh, yeah the answer is true pedontitis affect the time to conception also so if a female is planning to conceive and the female has the disease then unless she goes for the comprehensive pedontal treatment the conception time may take a little more it's normally whatever we plan but then conception time increases there are papers on this topic also so this is something newer thing to add up that yeah pedontal disease also affects your time to conception it's called ttc terminology so you have to use that and then pedontitis will affect the time to conception so conception has to be planned so that's why we say antenatal counseling is mandatory most of the hospitals are going for antenatal counseling and evaluating the response of the patients then asking them to go ahead with their plan so that is one important